Today in parallel programming, we will be moving on to the next topic, which is PCI pass and what are the potential benefits of uh, using the GPU. When you have seen this, the main components of a GPU in the earlier class, we have seen PCI plays a major important role in transferring the data from CPU to GPU. So if you could just see here, PCI uh, bus will act, it is a peripheral component interconnect which will connect both your uh, uh, CPU as well as your GPU. And CPU is basically used for your sequential execution and GPU, GPU is used for your parallel execution. The main transfer of the data starts with CPU will first send the uh, instruction and the data to the GPU stating that what operation is to be performed by the GPU. So based on the data and the instruction, so it first provides the instruction and then it provides the corresponding data. So these two are being communicated to the GPU. Data is being transferred as well as the instructions. So based on this input provided by the CPU, the GPU will perform the required operation on the codes and the result would be again sent back to the CPU. So this is how this is how the communication takes place between a GPU and a CPU based on your PCI bus. Now when you want to go for using this PCI bus, some amount of overhead is involved in the communication. So that overhead uh, is based on or if you want to improve the speed of your GPU uh, overcoming these overheads. One first parameter we'll be using is bandwidth. So when you go for your bandwidth of the PCI, you can either calculate using your estimated method or the calculated method. In the estimated method, we develop a model and this model, uh, we set up a upper bound or a peak uh, bound for your bandwidth. So what is the amount of bandwidth required for a particular application? We set up a threshold so that we can call it as upper bound or a peak bound using this model. Uh, you even have a micro benchmark application where this is uh, suitable for a small component of your application or a particular function in your application where you want to know what is the amount of uh, bandwidth that has been used. So here we'll concentrate on the total part of the program when I go for peak and here we only concentrate on a part of a program. This is estimated one. So you estimate it. Now coming to the realtical thing, you have want to go for calculating the actual bandwidth of your PCI bus. So for that, we go for uh, using PCI lanes multiplied with the transfer rate and overhead factor as well as if you want the total value to be represented in terms of bits. So you convert it into byte by bits. And PCI -E, e here is nothing but Peripheral Component Interface Express. So this is the latest uh, version of the interconnect that is being used for connecting your uh, P uh, CPU and the GPU. And how you will be able to get these values. So you cannot randomly dump the values and calculate. So for each of your PCI E, we have different uh, generations. And each of these generation will have its own overhead factor overhead factor as well as your maximum transfer rate. So the maximum transfer rate can be sub, uh, substituted here and overhead factor and you can calculate a number of lanes, theoretical bandwidth, so number of lanes. So you can substitute the value specified in this table and you get a theoretical bandwidth. Now the next factor which depends upon your overhead is nothing but your memory. You have two types of memories here. One is your pinned memory, the other is your pageable memory. Pinned memory as it implies. In GPU, you have or uh, when you go for your CPU, you have a particular part of the memory which is uh, pinned. Means that you cannot uh, make this, you cannot move this memory. Whatever data is being stored here, it is to be as it is. You cannot transfer this uh, data which is present in the RAM of your CPU onto your secondary memory. Meaning that the portion of the memory which is fixed, you cannot move it into your secondary memory. So swapping cannot be done. That is the reason we call it as pinned memory or the other name is non-pageable memory. You cannot page it. Uh, as we all know, we have learnt in operating system where we can divide our process into parts. And each of the page, whatever you have in your uh, primary memory can be moved onto your secondary memory. Whereas here, this part of the memory cannot be moved. 
what is advantage of using it so if you are using this pinned memory there is no intervention gpu can directly get the data from pinned memory so the transfers from pinned memory to the gpu will take place without the involvement of the cpu so cpu will not be involved in the transfer of the data but when you are using this pinned memory you are to be very much cautious that how much amount of your ram is used for your pinned memory why because if you are using too much of your ram for pinned memory you cannot accommodate the remaining process so the multi processing concept will be degraded and it cannot be too less so depending on the type of application you decide the size of your uh, pinned memory which is not uh, very low or not very high and coming to the next part of your memory it is your pageable memory where as a name implies you can move this particular page from your cpu ram to your secondary memory or from secondary memory to your cpu ram it is your no normal pageable memory the advantage as i told you is you can move this from primary to secondary and secondary to memory but the disadvantage is whenever you want a transfer of the data from the pageable memory so first the cpu has to take the data and store it in your gpu and from the gpu you have to make an extra copy and then you take it so there should be an involvement of your cpu for transfer of the data now having seen uh, pci bus the overhead factors involved in it we'll move on to the next topic which is multi gpu platforms so when i call it as a multi gpu platforms you have multiple gpus available on the network so these two gpus are connected to one particular cpu and you have this uh, uh, cpu connected with two gpus and all of them are present in different network so this is a multi gpu platforms where you have multiple gpus present either on a same network or a different network now when you want the actual data transfer to take place ultimately you want your data to be moved from cpu to gpu for your processing and after the processing you want your data to be ba moved back from gpu to cpu and when you want to go for this particular transfer you have a standard data transfer so when i go for a standard data transfer i assume i want the data i assume these are gpu 1 gpu 2 gpu 3 and gpu 4 i want the data to be moved from gpu 1 to gpu 3 and this gpu 3 is not present on the same network so try to understand how many transfers are required first from the gpu memory gpu device will take the data using your pci bus it is given be given to your cpu and this cpu will be storing it in the ram right and after that after that it will be again the same data will be sent see here the same data will be sent to your second processor or the second cpu right and from there the data will be sent over the network from the network the data will be placed on to your processor finally to your system memory and from the system memory the data will be sent back using your pci bus to your gpu and finally to your gpu ram so these many transfers are to be uh, taking place when you want the data present in one particular uh, gpu to be moved to the other gpu when you go for a shared process when you want to optimize this data moment so whatever data moment we have seen earlier we want to go for optimizing it so when you go for optimizing it see the number of connections required the gpu will take just take the data from the gpu memory pass it over to your pci bus and from here it directly give, will be given to your processor and your pci bus so no where you are uh, using your cpu to store it in your system memory taking it from the system memory directly from your gpu to your processor to the network and processor so the number of transfers that are there for the movement of the data from gpu to gpu are been reduced so this is how the data transfer takes place when you have multiple gpus over a network now i been we have been talking about the gpu characteristics of the gpu and how the data transfers but what are the benefits of using your gpu ultimately the time required for providing your solution is reduced because you have multiple cores that are available so a work which is done by a single cpu one particular work which may take 10 hours for a cpu by making use of a gpu it can be even done in one hour because you have multiple cores or thousands of cores available and you are even reducing the energy 
with the GPUs. Why? Because when I say we have 100 cores, all the time 100 cores will not be active. So how do you calculate the amount of energy here? Number of cores that are being active. How many cores are active? All the 100 cores will not get the job at the same time, right? Into what is the watt for each of the core that is uh, being made active and number of hours you are using that particular device. So this gives you a total energy consumption. So out of 100, if I'm using only 10 particular cores in my uh, thing, so you will get the energy consumption should also be reduced, right? And the last benefit is reduction in cloud computing cost. So what do you understand by this cloud con uh, computing cost? Uh, you, the resources are not available with your organization. You are using uh, some other resources with other organization on a rental basis. So when I say on a rental basis, you will be paying for the resources on a hourly basis, right? Or for which amount of time you are using. So as I told the same example, if I go for a machine learning model, if the same thing is executed by the CPU, it may take 10 hours. So the amount of cost will be more. When I use the same machine learning application on a GPU, it may take one hour. So I'm only paying for the amount of time I'm making use of the resources. So by this, you are, redu you are even reducing the cloud computing cost. And you are to be very much clear in some applications you need not uh, you should not make use of your gpus where there is no parallelism so if you don't have any parallelism there is no need of using a gpu directly you can work on a cpu and irregular memory access so if your memory access is not contiguous right so in non contiguous memory access this would not be uh, performing well and dynamic memory allocation requirements and recursive algorithms. So if you have these three factors in an application better, instead of making use of a GPU, you rely on upon your CPU. So these are the potential benefits of the GPU and some applications where it is not required for your GPU to work.